welcome back to my channel, fellow booktube watchers, fellow readers, etc, etc, at all. Um, today we are going to talk about The Good Turn by Dorothy McTurnan. It just came out in the United States in physical copy like this month, I think. Um, it's, it's been out on, it's been out since March on audio. So I was really surprised. I was we're reading it for book club and a lot of people said they couldn't get it. <laughs> They're like, I can't find this book anywhere. No one has it. It's not out yet. And I'm like, are you sure? And yeah, it's out. It's out now in the United States. Anyway, that's the point. And the point is that it's been out for a while on audio. Oops, I'm kicking everything. My whole setup is so precarious. I need to not knock it over. <laughs> anyway. So this is her third Cormac Riley um, novel, and she's written two other short stories about kind of in the Cormac Riley associated universe. Um, and out of all of them, this is not my fave. I've read all of her work so far. I've read every single thing. I made a whole video about. In fact, I'm gonna like leave a link or tag it or whatever, and I'm gonna. <laughs> I made a video about. All four of her other things, her two novels and her two short stories, I read those, and I talked about that in another video, about how she's like my new fave. I love her, this is her newest book. I'm excited, just ignore my boo-boo. Just ignore, <laughs> I injured myself. Don't feel sorry for me, I'm a trooper. <laughs> anyway, so this one is set both in Dublin and Roundstone, mostly, in Ireland. The other novels were set in Galway but the newest one is set in Dublin and Roundstone and I liked the overall book I gave it like a 3.5 ish stars I gave her other books like all four and five stars I thought they were so good but this one I rounded up to four stars just because I enjoyed the series and I enjoyed the characters and I enjoyed where it eventually went but I felt like the plot was a little bit meandering because in this one it's different we're not all together on one case we kind of start off with this case that's a kidnapping and then that kicks off like a chain of events of us kind of I don't we don't even know what they're really investigating until like a third of the way through because it's like there's a kidnapping and then that kicks off something else which leads to something else which leads to something else so over the course of this Cormac and another detective Peter get separated they were trying to work together on this kidnapping case and peter gets in trouble i don't know if it's a spoiler it's like a mild spoiler but i'm not going to say everything that happens but he kind of gets in trouble so he gets sent off to roundstone where his father is also a police officer a garda sorry and then in dublin cormac they both get in trouble he gets sent away from galway too well he goes on a suspension and his <laughs> his um way of dealing with that is not just by taking the time off his way of dealing with that is like oh I'll go to Dublin and kick up some more trouble for myself and for everybody involved so the the story goes to two different places so it goes to Dublin a larger city and Roundstone a little small town where Peter is actually originally from and his father is there and his father is like the police chief and that's drama of course they don't get along I'm not even gonna tell you it's a whole journey like when Peter starts talking about his dad and his relationship with his father and what happened between his mother and father and why he doesn't like his dad. I'm gonna let you make up your mind. I don't want to sully the water too much. But I'll just tell you that I hate Pete's, Peter's dad. I hate that guy. And I, you know, I don't want to do spoilers. This is no spoiler. But I really wanted to deck that guy in the face. Like I was like, ooh, what a terrible person. And I really thought that he was going to be more deeply involved with the trouble in the book than he was. He, I don't want us to give any spoilers, but just know that Peter's dad is chief scumbag, okay? And <laughs> so in Dublin, Cormac is off suspended and not supposed to be investigating anything. He gets kind of embroiled in, this is kind of like a mild spoiler, but there's like a police corruption plot that's related to the kidnapping plot and related to the Murphys, which is his, it's over, he's a detective sergeant. What is his, 
Murphy is, is he a chief as well? He's a chief. I don't know. I don't know the ranks of the Guardi. So he's like over, he, one Murphy is over Cormac and he gets in trouble with him. And his son also works with him via the drug squad. So that's a hot mess and that's going to get sorted. And if you have read her other novels, you'll be like, oh, I kind of remember them talking about that in her last novel. So obviously she had the seed of an idea way back when. Anyway, so overall, I felt like the plot was a little, oh, oh, and then the plot was a little meandering because then we meander back to Roundstone where Peter is investigating all of this stuff going on with a murder that happened there called, was two um, guys in this family called the Lynch family. They got murdered on their farm and his dad is like, stop investigating it. We already solved it. And he's like not satisfied. So he keeps neither, neither Cormac nor Peter are doing what they're supposed to be doing per use. And actually Cor Cormac usually does what he's supposed to do. But lately he's been sassy, going against the grain getting in a lot of trouble okay so that's all for the non-spoilers what I what I will also say for all the people who don't want spoilers because I want to I do want to get into spoilers towards the end okay um right now I'm just gonna say that it was good like if you follow it through if you go through with all of the like back and forth and who's who you get introduced to tons and tons of rando people that you don't get introduced to in other previous novels and then you have to go in through all of the politics of two different towns three different towns worth of police politics and all this stuff once you get through that I think the ending is worth it I think it's worth it I think that it is better than three stars but it, in the beginning it's gonna make you work a little bit the beginning is gonna make you work a little bit okay it's a little bit that's why I took it down from four stars a little bit but it's not enough to like I listen to the audiobook okay I don't know if you like are re if you're reading it it's gonna slow you down and make you want to put it down but it might be the kind of thing that you put down because you get a little like eh, with it you get a little mad with it maybe you get a little bored it's too meandering but some people might like that that it switches back and forth and has a lot going on it, it's like it has a lot going on but we don't even know what all we're investigating we're not picking up on clues propelling us through a mystery it's not like one cohesive mystery it's not even like two cohesive mysteries it's really like we are finding out things almost in real time and stumbling upon things and then it gets solved really quickly compared to how long we spent thinking about it you know what I'm saying so anyway let me get into spoilers. So at eight minutes, 15 seconds, it's spoilers. Let's just talk about the very ending. I like where it eventually goes. I really thought his dad, scumbag, chief scumbag. I really, I don't even remember his name. He's so disgusting. Uh, oh, uh, Dez, chief scumbag. What a, just a scummy, scummy guy. To cheat on your wife with cancer, I'm like, wow. I didn't know they had John Edward types in, uh, in Ireland. If you're from America, you probably you may you may or may not remember John Edwards. Am I saying the right name? John Edwards, yeah. Um he was from South Carolina and he was running for senator or whatever he was running for. And his wife had cancer and he was cheating on her. I'm like, that so that's <laughs> girl. We were all disgusted. Oh yeah. Yeah, senator disgusting he's the worst he's 68 now wow goodness yeah so his wife elizabeth edwards had cancer just like in the book and i it's disgusting i was like what a terrible person and then like the part that really took me over the edge with the dad with des was when they had that little heart to heart and he was like listen i'm not gonna apologize i feel like i did the best i could sir no you didn't that's <laughs> no you didn't like if you want to move on and get married even if you want to send your child to boarding school those are two things like let's say that i know that i'm not that good of a parent and i want to send you to boarding school to basically get raised by other people i'm not gonna 
gonna sit here and act like that was the best choice. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I sent you to boarding school because I'm a good parent. He sent him to boarding school because he knows he's not a good parent. Like, <laughs> tell the truth. Anyway, and then he could have just left him with the grandma, okay? Or even just had him in the house and had the grandma over there. Obviously, the grandma was willing to help take care of him. But she, he didn't see, see, the reason he did that is because he didn't want to have to fight and have back and forth discussions with the grandmother all the time. So that's why he didn't want to give like partial custody or whatever to the grandmother and have her help raise him. Because he didn't want to, he didn't want her calling him on his bullshit, probably. Okay, let's call it what it is. Because he was out here in the streets with all kinds of women. Well, he's like, how do people respect him? How do people, how do you live with someone and respect them knowing he did that? I can't, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta move on from that aspect. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next thing. <laughs> um, I was, and I'm reading this with book club, right? And I was saying to book club, I was like, yeah, you know, it's really good. It's a really good series, but you really don't have to read all of the series to get the story. I think they're all standalone, in my opinion. But when you have Emma and Cormac together and then breaking up after three novels, I kind of think that would be more impactful if you read all the novels. I really feel like that would have been more impactful if you read all the novels. So I'm like, oh, uh -oh I don't know how book club's going to feel about this one. It's, and I'm like, oh, I hope this doesn't turn them off to the series. But yeah, it would have been more impactful because I really was like, I, when I was listening to it, I was like, where is Emma? Where is Emma? Like the whole time, <laughs> the whole time I was listening, I was like, where is Emma at? Because I really like them together as a couple. I literally, really, I didn't realize until I was like back reading the story. I'm like, I really like Emma and Cormac's, like their whole characterization, their whole journey into their relationship. And I think it's bonkers that their relationship like hurt Cormac's career and now they're breaking up. <laughs> I hate that for him. I hate that for him. Poor baby. And I'm like, are they really just gonna break up just like that? They had a whole conversation. They kind of came to terms in a, a, a little. I'm like, please get them back together. Please. Well, it is what it is. And then I really thought, because they were kind of, when he left and got suspended, I really thought she was trying to switch him over to Interpol or something. I'm like, is she trying to do like a spinoff series? This is what I thought in my head was happening. I was like, okay, so she's bringing, because the perspective usually is just like Cormac and Peter mostly. Um, I mean, the perspective is usually in the other two novels, just Cormac. But this one, she kind of divided it to Cormac and Peter evenly. And I'm like, is she trying to bring C Peter to the front of like the detective series? And then Cormac is going to go off and be in an Interpol series and she's going to do a spinoff series. But no, uh, they got together. I, and when Pete, when Cormac got to Roundstone and was out there with Peter and they were working together again, I was like, I like the vibes. I like the vibes of them working together. I like their energy as like little partners playing off each other. And I knew that, he, you know, I knew it was going to like, they were going to get it together once that happened. Once the two of them got back together, I knew that was going to wrap up at that point. Um, and then I really liked the ending twist. Oh, to me, it was kind of a twist of Anna and her daughter having, because you knew something happened in the beginning, but we didn't know what it was. So I liked that he, she had that evidence that cinched everything together i'm like yes that was a good little that was a good little addition a good little twist i enjoyed it um but was i satisfied Are we satisfied was i overall satisfied i wasn't totally satisfied i felt like it made us wait a long time for us to like realize what we were even investigating like by the time we figure out that it's not about the kidnapping <laughs> well not by the time we knew it wasn't about the kidnapping because she got she came back but I thought that it was going to be like I didn't know what it was going to be about I'm like is this about like a, a trafficking ring where they're kidnapping girls or you know where, where where are we taking this you know with all this shady stuff going on but it would turned out to be related to drug dealing and police corruption and etc cetera, etc cetera. 
I thought that the novel was good, but I don't think it's not my favorite. My favorite out of all of the novels is The Scholar that with Emma and Cormac really in the forefront together. I really like them two together and I really liked the I really liked the story of The Scholar. I really liked the you know, all of the DNA and all that stuff that they were talking about, the lab and all the drama with the lab and all the interpolitics with the lab. And um, anyway, so I thought the book was overall enjoyable. The plot was a little meandery, a little back and forthy. <laughs> I'm just, I don't have any adjectives in my brain. I'm tired. I'm, I'm done. I just came from work. I, this is the best I can do. <laughs> That's what I'm giving you guys. If you're here at the end of this video, leave me a gold star <clears throat> because I, I deserve a gold star. I'm doing the best I can do. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> leave me a trophy. <laughs> leave me a gold sticker. Anyway, <laughs> how are you doing? Hi. Hello. Bye. Have a good time, booktube friends. And I will be back tomorrow and I'm going to be talking about Nine Perfect Strangers.